It is my video on Leonardo da Vinci, an amazing genius. And I get most of this information from the School for Foreigners of Leonardo da Vinci, which is located in an obscure alley in Florence, Italy. Here's a self-portrait of this incredible man. And obviously he is quite aged when he did this. Uh, but this is... Uh, self-portrait so I assume as an incredible artist this is what he looked like all of his inventions and models he made were historical firsts at least the ones that are presented here there may be many others that I'm not referencing such so as the first actual printing machine uh, the first printed book I believe was the Gutenberg Bible as I recall my history but here he also made the first uh, fountain pen so a, a reloadable ink pen that could be used and uh, here's an actual fountain pen as he developed it and his actual doodles done with that pen on display in the museum he also developed uh, probably the first uh, suit of armor complete suit of armor and uh, this would be again copied over many centuries after that he developed the first flying machine and here's uh, his production of one of those uh, the canvas is left off of the wings but you can see uh, it was pedaled by a human being and operated by foot here's the actual foot pedals uh, on the contraption that he developed uh, which was alleged to be the first actual flying machine. He drew the Vitruvian Man, and uh, this was uh, this is a famous, at least in medicine, uh, famous artwork. It's also one of the most accurate works of art, supposedly, of the human body. Uh, he did have a good imagination. He did fantastic animals and he studied many of these different arrangements of animals such as this this is a, a sculpture of a fantastic animal as uh, presented in the museum of Leonardo da Vinci and an amazing genius uh, the most amazing one I can recall ever studying uh, he produced a revolving crane. Now this is still in use today. Amazingly, the uh, cranes are used in construction and uh, earth moving, mining, etc. And this was a early mock-up and model that he developed that was an actual working model. And again, he invented it uh, 500 years ago. Uh, he invented the first so-called mortar which is basically a cannon and balls would be put in and fired off using uh, gunpowder but here's here's the first one he invented uh, does not have a very long barrel I guess he didn't figure it out more accurate more power with the longer barrel length but this was the first and so uh, he is given credit for this uh, again this would be like like one that would be on a ship, for example, where they may not be able to have long barrels. He developed the first uh, hydraulic saw, and these are still in use today. And having worked in a sawmill many years ago, I would say they look very similar to the, uh, the gang chain and gang plank sawing machines that are used in modern sawmills today. There it is. There's the first mock-up and model of a sawing machine. Now these were incredible, these sized chariots. These were really dangerous war battle machines, uh, devastating battlefield weapon and those sides would go along and slice anyone uh, into pieces that was uh, walking on the battlefield near him. Okay, he did amazing exact animal anatomy 
So great study must have gone into this and a great interest and then uh, great both illustrations and models and sculptures were done such as this one. This is made out of wood but this is an amazingly accurate sculpture of a large horse life size in the museum and uh, this was again uh, produced and modeled designed by Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, his notes were all mirrored which was uh, I guess to help prevent other people from uh, stealing his ideas his patents I don't believe were in place at the time but uh, his notes are original notes. Here's his on display in the museum and uh, if you look in the mirror then you can actually read them but obviously they were also in Italian which I am not too fluent at reading Italian so here's his, some of his diagrams again in the mirror uh, you can read them correctly but he developed many of these original diagrams such as for the first helicopter is in that notebook of his and uh, this has a blade on it it's propelled by hand, crank, hand cranks and uh, he also had a tank that was similar to this uh, he called his his air screw uh, obviously in Italian but uh, translated to English was uh, air screw so and then here's his model mock-up uh, as he developed the uh, personal air screw and again this was uh, cranked by uh, humans and would have acted like a helicopter so he developed the first hygrometer which was uh, for measuring atmospheric uh, conditions was something like uh, a weighted instrument and uh, here's the first uh, of those balance for weights and measures he uh, developed and invented this he developed the anemometer and the anemoscope uh, which could also measure variables in the atmosphere and uh, here's his first wind direction indicator so uh, this is like the first uh, weather vane but actually gave a direction so it was actual instrument he developed and he developed the first uh, ball bearings amazing uh, multiple different types of ball bearings of different shapes and for different uses this one is for use on a vertical member to uh, hold it up and to keep it functioning and moving so here you can see that these uh, rotate around their ball bearings and he was the first to develop even though they're not steel these are wood but they are still very functional he developed the first flywheel now interestingly uh, first flywheel I can think of in use was for steam engines and this was approximately 400 years later that steam engines were actually developed that required the flywheel as invented by the amazing genius Leonardo da Vinci of Italy and he was amazing yes okay uh, the eccentric cam now he developed the first camshaft now 500 years later camshafts are in uh, most cars automobiles engines uh, etc they are uh, very necessary for the functioning of that here's the first one 500 years ago and 500 years before cars were invented so this guy was amazing um, you know how he envisioned what envisioned what these would be used for and here endless screw and cog wheel now this was another one of his inventions and uh, I'm not sure if people at the time envisioned what this was useful for but it is taking a one type of circular motion and uh, 
forming that from a vertical weight being dropped so a linear motion turned into a circular motion. Another type of that mechanism is the rack mechanism. So here you can see it takes a, a circular motion, turns it into a vertical motion or vice versa. Uh, the lantern mechanism, also called the lantern pinion, here it is. It takes a concentric motion and turns it into or transforms it into another concentric motion of a different angle. I uh, studied weights and measures and it's all parts of uh, physics. He was one of the first to do this intensively and developed for example this uh, pulley system uh, was his invention. He developed many other types of pulleys and lever systems that are still in use today. So this gives a great mechanical advantage to someone trying to lift and adjust something. Again, the ball bearings, he developed and invented the precursors of modern ball bearings, which are required for all types of machines and anything that functions with uh, motion to reduce the friction. Here's a system setups for circular motion with uh, ball bearings of various shapes and sizes. The rolling mill. Now this uh, was another one of his famous inventions still in use today in all types of factories for rolling out metal into sheets and also as you can see in the picture that's coming up this does look like a ringer washer so he 500 years or 400 years at least before the ringer washer was invented to squeeze the water out of clothing. Uh, my mother and grandmother used to use uh, one of these. Now, now we have washers and special dryers that do this. But anyway, the distribution cam, motion transmission. Sorry, it's spelled wrong, but this is the museum uh, did that. But uh, he also invented this, and here is a uh, diagram of it. Now this again is in invaluable in industry, in car engines, all types of in engines. Uh, you need this uh, chain that goes around the gears and transfers the energy. Okay, uh, this is an interesting invention, mirror room. Uh, I'm not sure, except for the optics involved, that uh, this is too practical today. Uh, maybe an amusement park, but anyway, it was fun to go inside his actual invention and see myself millions of times replicated in an image that goes on into infinity. I believe there were eight mirrors uh, formed in a circle for this uh, instrument. Now, he was a great artist, incredible genius artist, and he did studies for Mona Lisa, obviously uh, an incredible artist. This may have been a study for Mona Lisa. This definitely looks like Mona, so I believe this was one of his studies uh, for the future Mona Lisa painting that is now hanging in the Louvre. And he did have lots of other studies. Here's a incredible self-sculpture that he did. And again, he was older at this time, but he was an amazing multi-talented uh, genius, and I say true genius as uh, probably may have never existed previously or even since, uh, as far as I could tell from my studies. Now, I invented the Archimedean screw, which was a way of getting water from a lower point to an upper point by using a screw mechanism. Here it is, and uh, this was invaluable for for centuries uh, for moving water from a lower place to a higher place and uh, all you have to do is apply some power to the screw mechanism and it functioned very well. Uh, I invented the multi-passenger helicopter. Here's a mock-up model uh, that he made of, of uh, one of those with obviously three or four seats 
uh, available. And he studied the wing of a flying machine and uh, produced the first planes. Now this looks very similar to the Wright Brothers plane that they flew on first 400 years later. He developed the first parachute and uh, it was an amazing invention and uh, he made models of it, apparently used it. People could jump from one altitude to another without hurting themselves. They would float down uh, slowly. Here's his uh, invention. They look a little bit different today but anyway he did uh, produce the first and that was totally amazing and oh wow he invented the first bicycle can you believe that 500 years ago more than 500 years ago uh, the first bicycle which was actually a pedal bicycle with two wheels and looks very similar to our modern bicycles which are still being produced and in effect but you can see the pedals there that uh, your feet would pedal the steering mechanism is a little different than the ones today uh, maybe today they're a little more sturdy made out of metal but his first one was made out of uh, wood as this but it was functional uh, here's his he was a great sculptor and artist both painter and sculptor here's a mock-up for his last supper which is some people say his most famous painting but he did a, a sculptured mock-up before he actually produced the painting on the wall of the church and is still viewed today uh, he also did the first machine gun amazing but uh, he put a bunch of barrels together, so it was kind of like a Gatling gun. Um, the exact mechanism was not like modern machine guns, but this functioned again as a machine gun. So obviously he was interested in war and fighting, probably because there was a lot of that going on. Here's the machine gun. Again, multiple barrels and uh, the shells, well they weren't shells, but they uh, hadn't been invented yet, but they could be fired like little cannons um, multiple times. And uh, this revolutionized uh, warfare at the time, I believe, to my understanding. And again, here is the Wright Brothers plane looks like this 400 years uh, earlier. And uh, this was his uh, mock-up using canvas but it looks very similar to the Wright brothers first uh, plane that they uh, had their first uh, small flight in. He also developed the first army tank. Now this is the uh, inside of it. It's only half of the shell on the outside but this would protect the uh, fighters inside. It had a complete shell. It was mobile. The men would uh, crank the wheels inside and it would move like a little turtle along the ground adding protection from uh, people with bow and arrows. Okay, automation. He was the first to develop automation and this was amazing. He uh, tried to develop the first robots which actually looked like humans. Uh, they were mechanical and could move and function. Uh, here's uh, one of his first uh, mock-ups of the uh, robot and uh, again I noted that we still have not perfected these uh, but he made the first one and uh, he should be given great credit for that uh, Leonardo made this over five centuries ago hard to believe a first robot and uh, how he could envision and produce something like that invent the robot Totally amazing, total amazing genius, I call him. Okay, here's the uh, picture of the original Last Supper. Again, I showed you the mock-up, carved mock-up that he used to uh, paint this later in uh, on the church's wall. And uh, he also was a great sculptor. Here's Leonardo da Vinci's self-sculpture. And again, he looks uh, fairly 
on in age in this one. And uh, I don't, or I could not find too many younger pictures of him, but at least we have some idea of what he looked like. And this was his famous uh, self-portrait um, that he had uh, uh, hand-drawn and uh, etched. And so we get some idea of what this genius uh, looked like. Now we d also did a comparison many years ago of the proportions showing that Mona Lisa may have actually been modeled from the proportions of Leonardo da Vinci. So he may have actually looked in a mirror to uh, make the famous Mona Lisa painting, which is actually now hanging in the Louvre and uh, greatly appreciated by most people. Leonardo da Vinci was probably the most amazing human I've ever studied, and I hope you understand that from uh, this presentation, this video, and I thank you for all your kind support over the years. And again, I am a medical doctor, and this is me uh, approximately 500 years after da Vinci, uh, but at a yuck, much younger age for me too. Please subscribe to my free channel. Press on my caricature uh, below. And uh, thank you for your kind support. And have a good life. Thank you very much.